Deuteronomy 30 verse 1. 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 Everybody got it? Yes. Amen. It shall come to pass. All these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse, which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind along all the nations, whither the Most High thy God hath driven thee, and shall return unto the Most High thy God. And thou shalt what? And shall return unto the Most High thy God, and shall obey his voice, according to all that I have commanded thee this day. Thou and thy children, with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, that then the Most High thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee, and will return and gather thee from all, from all the nations whither the Most High thy God has scattered thee. If any of thy be driven out unto the outmost parts of heaven, from this will the Most High thy God gather thee, and from this will he fetch thee. And the Most High thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, shall possess it, and he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. So we shouldn't give up on the Most High because obviously he's not giving up on us. Here it says, return unto the Lord thy God. Return to the Most High. The key word here is return because when you return to something, obviously that means you was there before, so you got to return back to it, right? Uh -huh. So he says, return because he gave us the commandments in the beginning, but then we broke them and then he sent us into Egypt as slaves and he brought us out of Egypt and we still kept breaking them so he sent us to so many other captivities so he's waiting on us right now to get it right in this captivity so he could send us back to the promised land that he promised our forefathers so the Most High never gave up on us so we shouldn't give up on the Most High exactly and the fact that he never gave up on us is for a good reason it's because the Most High really cares about us and he don't want to hurt harm or damage us the Most High we are like we are his children we're not we're not these other nations. We're his children. We're his firstborn. And the Most High really love us. With that being said, take you to 2nd Exodus 16 and 74. Say so be when you get there. 2nd Exodus 16 and 74. Here, O ye, my beloved. Second Ezra 16 and 74. Got it? Yeah. All yeah. right. Here, O ye, my beloved. Now, you see what the Most High just called us? He called us his beloved. We're not the Edomites. We're not the Hamites. We're not the Ishmaelites. We're the Israelites, his firstborn. He just called us his beloved. Continue up. Said the Most High, Behold, the days of trouble are at hand. The days of trouble are at hand. This could be temptation that you're going through. This could be Jacob's trouble. This could be martial law this could be the jubilees that we go through the days of trouble are at hand continue but i will deliver you from the same those same troubles that we will go through the most High will deliver us from that so he's saying that he know the days of trouble are at hand and he'll deliver us from that continue what be ye not afraid be ye not what afraid be not afraid neither doubt neither doubt don't be afraid while you're on this walk for doubt don't ever think twice about doing something good about the Lord of Most High. Don't ever think twice about keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments. Continue. For the Most High is your God. The Most High is our God. We know this area like it, like, like the back of our hand. We know if we go down the street or around the corner from our house to go to the store, we, need, we, we don't need a GPS. We don't need, you feel me, a GPS to get to the store to get back to the store. But the Most High said he's our what? Our God. Our God. The fact that we in this wicked world, we need a spiritual God. We need somebody to guide us and to show us the right way. The Most High is our God. Let's see who knows who God. Continue. And the guide of them who keep my commandments. And keep this commandments. Continue. And precepts. And precepts. Set the Most High. Let so, not. So we see he only guides those that keep his commandments and precepts. He's not going to guide you if you all committed wickedness or if you want to do what you want to do. You got to keep his commandments if you want a spiritual guide. Continue. 
Let not your sins weigh you down. Don't let your sins weigh you down. If y'all commit a sin or if y'all trespass against the Most High, do not let it weigh you down. Do not ponder on it or be like, oh, I committed a sin. The Most High forsake you. David went into sin, but he didn't give up on the Most High. He just kept going harder and harder. And, and what makes the Most High so perfect that he's a just God. You reap what you sow. And we're going to uh, prove that. Go to 2 Chronicles 15 and 2. Let me know when you guys get there. Say so be it. us at all and we can find that in jeremiah 29 and 11 so the most high do not want to cast us out do not want to forsake us we do not want to do us wrong we do not think that way about us let me know what you guys got jeremiah 29 verse 11 Most High know how he think about us. He know his thoughts towards us. Continue. Set the Most High thoughts of peace. Thoughts of what? Thoughts of peace. Thoughts of peace. Continue. And not of evil. The Most High, all his thoughts towards us is thoughts of peace. Not of evil. The Most High, he only thinks goodness of us. He want to give us the kingdom. He want to give us what we want and what we need and everything. He do not think just randomly like, I want to destroy Israel at all. Continue on. To give you an expected end. To give us an expected end. The Most High wants us to know what what we, what is the reward He wants to give us. He wants us to expect the end, which is the kingdom. Continue. Yep. Then, then shall ye call upon me. Call upon you and go up. But what else? And she and ye shall go and pray unto me. Now, when you go and pray unto the Most High, keeping His commandments and everything. Continue. And I will hearken unto you. He'll listen to us. He'll listen to us. And do what, what he wants us to do. Continue. And ye shall seek me. You shall seek me. Do seek me. Continue. And, and find me. Continue. When ye shall search for me with all your heart. Now we cannot do this halfway. We cannot give half of, half of our heart to the most high. He wants us with all our heart. He wants us to go hard for him and to not half step, to not be lukewarm or double minded. The most high wants us to go hard in this truth and to give us our all. Give us his. Give him our all. Like my like said, like we gotta be strong on this walk. We can't give up. We gotta stay strong, but that's that's a commandment also. But uh let's go to 2 Chronicles 15 and 7. 2 Chronicles 15 and 7. Say so big when you're there. Second 
Chronicles 15 and 7. Be ye strong. Be what? Be ye strong. Therefore, and let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. So he said, be strong and let not your hands be weak. So when he says, be strong and, and not give up for the Most High, because of the works that you do for the Most High, you will be blessed. But we also know that the Most High blesses you on his time. Like some people lose their strength because their reward didn't come right away. Let's go to uh, Galatians 6 and 9. It's a precept on that. In well doing, for in due season, for in what? In due season, we shall reap if we faint not. So he said, Be not weary in well doing, meaning that do not lose the spirit of the Most High because your reward didn't come right away. For in due season, meaning at a proper time, we shall reap harvest. So, so the most so our blessings will come if we don't give up on the Most High. Like some people will lose a job and then just give up on the Most High because the Most High didn't bless them with another job right away. But if they would have just stayed strong and not gave up, they probably would have let it a job paying double than what they was making. So it's all about not giving up, staying strong on this walk. Exactly. Just like he said, he said, in due season, we shall reap and get our reward if we think not. Now we know, just like he said, that if somebody get fired from a job, or if you're trying to keep the Sabbath and they fired you for that, you may just give up right then and there. Like, oh, you feel me? Like this little temptation that you're going through. Like he's going to see if you're worthy enough for him. You can't just come and serve the most high and not expect to be tempted to see if you're serious about him. That's just like if it was if it was all good, how would he know that you are for him if there's no evil? You feel me? So let me know when you get Ecclesiasticus 2 and verse 1. Thanks for being with you there. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all got it? Got it. Right. My son, if thou come to serve the Most High, you come to serve the Most High. You have to be ready for what you're going to get for that. You come to serve the Most High. What's going to happen? Prepare thy soul for temptation. Prepare for what? Temptation. Oh. Prepare for temptation. You got to get ready because this is going to be a strong walk, and he's going to see if you if you fit for this walk. If you come to serve the Most High, he's going to see if you're worthy enough for him. He wants strong soldiers. He wants strong women, strong men, and strong children. Continue up. Set thy heart upright. Uh -huh. And constantly endure. Constantly what? Endure. Not to, nah, read on up. And make not haste in time of trouble. So constantly endure. If you lose your job and you just be like, oh man, like I lost my job. I'm done. I'm done with the faith. You lose faith in the most high. You got to endure in that temptation. The most high is testing you to see if you're going to give up or if you're going to constantly go. You feel me? And where it says, make not haste in time of trouble. Don't wait till, till you get cast down or don't wait till you, till you in, a, in a bad situation. The call 26. Tyrak 4 and 26. Be not ashamed to confess thy sins. Do not be ashamed to the Most High to confess your sins. The Most High know what you did before you did it. He know you thought about it. He know it manifests in your mind. He know what you did. Don't be afraid to confess your sins to the Most High. Continue. Enforce not the course of the river. After you confess your sins to the Most High, do not force the course of the river. That's where that, that, that turn, just go with the flow. After you confess your sins to the Most High, continue going hard. Said, uh, so back to so I rack 4 and 26. And do not force the course of the river. After you confess your sins to the Most High, Leave it alone, continue doing righteousness, and do not force the course of the river. Do not just go with the flow and do not ponder on it. And I'm going to take y'all to Syrac 21 and verse 1. Say something when you get to Ecclesiastes 21 verse 1. Alright. 
My son, has thou sinned? Now the most high is asking you a question. He's saying, has thou sinned? He know you did, but he's asking, has, has, have you sinned? Continue. Do so no more. Do so what? No more. Don't do it no more. You sin, you know you did. Put it away. Don't do it no more. Continue. But ask pardon for thy former sin. Ask, ask forgiveness for your former sins. Do not sin and not do it no more. Then don't ask the Most High for forgiveness. Ask forgiveness for your former sins and do it no more. Continue. Flee from sin as from the face of a serpent. Now, if you see a snake, an anaconda, a rattlesnake, a cobra, flee from it. You'll flee from that. So flee from sin the same way you'll flee from an anaconda. Continue. For if thou comest too near it, you come too near to this sin or to this snake, continue. It will bite thee. It will bite you. Go ahead. The teeth thereof are as the teeth of a lion. So this snake, this sin of this snake of sin, the teeth is as a lion. You got two big giant teeth. And now it will bite you. Continue. Slaying the souls of men. This is not killing your spirit. This is not killing your ego. This sin is slaying your soul. So when you commit a sin, you're not just, just killing your body, you killing your soul. In the afterlife, that's what you can do. You, you, got to, you got to take that up with the most high. When you commit this sin, you're slaying your soul. Continue. All iniquity is as a two-edged sword. So this iniquity is as a two-edged sword. This sword is a two-edged sword, big sword. Continue. The wounds whereof cannot be healed. So you know if you get cut by a knife or by a regular sword, you can patch that up, you can get healed. But if you get cut with this sword of iniquity, this it cannot get healed. It can, there's no going, there's no coming back from it. And so you know, you just gotta just flee from it. Do not ponder on your sins and flee from it fast. And stay away. Do not let your sins weigh you down. Let up. Like my heart said, we gotta flee from sin. Just having that thought in your head that you want to give up on the most high, that's a sin. So we should stay as far as as we can away just from that thought from giving up on the most high. Let's get that in Joshua 1 and 9. So say so be when you're there, Joshua 1 and 9. not commanded thee be strong and of good courage be what be strong and of good courage be not afraid neither be thou dismayed for the most high thy god is with thee whithersoever thou goest stop right there so as we can see he said he's commanding thee so that's a commandment to be strong and of good courage so we should not lose faith in the most high i got a precept on that let's go to deuteronomy 31 verse 5 Read on to verse 7. So Deuteronomy 31, verse 5. Yeah. And the Most High shall give them up before your face, for ye may do unto them according unto all the commandments which I have commanded you. Be strong and of good courage. Be what? Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Most High thy God, he is it that doeth go with me. He will. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. And Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and of good courage. And for, for thou must go with this people and the land which the Most High hath sworn unto their fathers to give them, and thou shalt cause them to inherit it. So like Moses said unto Joshua, it was a commandment to be strong and of good courage. So he said, be strong and not give up. Because if we give up, then basically we're saying we want to go back into sinning. Because we're not doing what the Most High is telling us to do. We want to just do us. We're saying we're done with the Most High. I'm going to just do me. So doing me is going to lead you into sin. So basically, if you're in this truth, and then you go back to doing you, you basically sinning willfully. And we know what the Most High think of people who sin willfully. Let's get that in Hebrews 10 and 26. Hebrews 10 and 26. Say so big when you're there. I can't remember. I don't know. 
Sin it willfully, so he said, There's no other sacrifice you can make when you go back into those ways. We know the Most High is a merciful and terrible God, but but giving up on the Most High, you jeopardizing your spot in the kingdom. So I'm not gonna give up on the Most High because I don't want to doubt to see if I'm gonna make it to the kingdom, you know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna just stay strong and not give up so I could know for sure that I, I got a spot in the kingdom. Exactly. Now, we know that there remain no more sacrifices for sins. And the wages of sin is death. The Most High have no pleasure in destroying us. He have no pleasure in, in laying his foot down on us. The Most High do not want us to do bad, and he do not want to do bad on us. You can find that in Ezekiel 18 and 23. Who was that? Hebrews what? Ezekiel 18 and 23. So yeah, like the Most High, he wants to say so be when you guys get there. The Most High wants to bless us with the kingdom. The Most High wants to bless us with the things that we want to need. He do not want to destroy us. Ezekiel 18 and 23. Ezekiel 18 and 23. All right. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die? The Most High do not have no pleasure in destroying the wicked. The Most High have no pleasure in when we do wrong, giving, giving us a whooping. Continue. Said the Most High, and not that he shall return from his ways and live. The Most High wants us to return from our ways and live. And we know that when, when we live for him, we keep in the commandments, the laws, and the statutes. We're doing what he wants us to do. Not our own pleasure, not what we want us to do, or not what we think is right. You feel me? The Most High wants to, the reason why he wants us to live, because he wants to reward us with something. And that reward is... Take me to uh, Luke 12 and 32. This is Luke 12 and 32. Uh, Hebrews is 16 and 1. Luke 12 and 32. Luke 12 and 32. Hebrews 16 and 1. So we see that, that it's not the Most High's pleasure to destroy us. So we can find out right now what is the Most High's pleasure. What do he? What pleases him? What do he delights in doing? Everybody got it? Go ahead. All right. Fear not. Fear what? Fear not. Continue. Little rock. Little flock. Little flock. Salakia. For it is your father's good pleasure. It is his good pleasure. He delights in this. 1242. To give you the kingdom. It's his good pleasure to give us the kingdom. That's what he delights in. That's what he wants to do. He wants to give us the kingdom. He do not take pleasure in destroying us. He do not want to see us fall. He do not want to want to forsake us. He do not want us to forsake him. You understand? And we, uh, I, I understand that in this walk, you feel me, you may fall. You may slip up here and there. But we're not supposed to slip up and to just ponder on that or to slip up and just give up on the most high or to give up on the truth. Take me to uh, Proverbs 26 and 16. 24 and 16. Proverbs 24 and 16. Say so be when you're there. Proverbs 24 and 16. Yeah. All right. For a just man fall it seven times. A righteous man is going to fall seven times in his truth. You're going to slip up. You're going to fall seven times. Continue. And rises up again. And rises up again. Just like I, I gave the example of our ancestors, uh, Sam, Sam, and David, they fell. But they rose up again and they went stronger. They went harder for the most high. A righteous man will fall seven times and get up and continue going hard. Amen. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. The, wick, the wicked is going to fall into mischief. The wicked is going to fall and not get up no more. So that, so that's where it comes that when we are keeping the commandments and walking in this truth, if we fall, the most high is going to uphold us. The most high is not going to let us fall all the way down and to just not let us get back up. You can find that in God. Psalms 37, 24. Psalms 37, 24. Proverbs 16, what? Proverbs 24, 16. Psalms 37, 24. So we know that when, when we fall in this truth, the most high is, is the, the most high has, he's going to uphold us. 
The Most High is not going to let us fall. He's not going to cast us away. Or he's not going to let us That's rise up again. Financial. Let me know when you guys get there. Psalms 37 and 24. 37, 24. Psalms 37, 24. Though he, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. Though he fall, we shall not be cast down. Why will we not be cast down? For the Most High upholded him with his hand. The Most High has us. When we fall, the Most High got us with his hand. The Most High is not going to let us fall. We not get back up. The Most High is not going to let us fall. It's a mystery for none of that. But we keep these commandments and we walk in the way he wants us to walk. You feel me? So I got a precept on that. Like he said, during our hardest struggles, the Most High going to be there to uphold us with his hand. Let's go to Isaiah 41 and 10. Say so be it when you get there. Isaiah 41 and 10. Isaiah 41 and 10. Fear thou not. Fear what? Fear thou not. For I am with thee. Be not dismayed. For I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yeah, I will help thee. Yeah, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. The Most High said he's going to uphold you with the right hand of his righteousness. So when you're feeling like you want to give up, just know the Most High is with you through your hardest struggles, no matter what it is. So just stay strong on this on this run. This is not a light, a, a light walk that we own. We gotta run. This is a marathon that we own, and we run into the kingdom. You feel me? And the Most High tells us that in First Corinthians nine and twenty-four. First Corinthians nine and twenty-four. So you know, I'm like, we gotta take this walk serious. We have to do this like it's our last. Go ahead, I. So, so go ahead, I. All right, First Corinthians nine and twenty-four. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all. So everyone that's running up in this race to the kingdom, everyone is running. We all on, we all on this marathon to the kingdom. We all want the same goal. Go ahead, I. But one receiveth the prize. He's asking the question. Only one is going to receive a prize. Each of us is going to receive a prize on this run to the, on this marathon to the kingdom. Go ahead. So run. So that, what? So run. So run that ye may obtain. So the Most High is telling us. Run so you can obtain this prize. Get your prize, run. He not telling you to walk. He not telling you to power walk. He not telling you to jog. He's telling you to run so you can get this prize. Continue on. 25. All right. Verse 25. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. So every man that striveth for the mastery. If you in this walk to just gain to just gain more knowledge than the next person or to just be above this person if you trying to if you trying to have that hierarchy then a person everything that you get is going to be temporary those that run to this for the mastery your prize is going to be temporary and let's see what type of crown we're going to get go ahead now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown those that run this marathon just for the mastery for the mastery spot is going to obtain a corruptible crown. Their crown is going to be rusty, it's going to be dirty, it's going to be old, bent up, and everything. Continue. But we are incorruptible. Well, our crown is going to be incorruptible. Our crown is going to be priceless. It's going to be gold. It's going to be decked out. We're going to have a pure gold crown. But let's see what type of crown is that that the Most High is going to reward us with. The Most High wants to give us a crown, all of us here. Let's see what type of crown that's going to be. We're going to get that in James 1 and 12. They went to 25. James 1 and 12. Uh, no, they went to 25. James 1 and 12. So they see it when you get the So yeah, man, like everybody. So yeah, man, like we all up on this run. We all trying to get, trying to obtain a crown. Anyone that's trying to. So be it. So be it. Go ahead up. All right. But that is the man that endured temptation. That endured what? Temptation. So that's so that's just like earlier when we was reading it that in, in, in this walk, if you want to receive a crown, if you want to have everlasting life, you're gonna to have to endure. You're gonna to have to you have to be strong in this walk. You have to bless the men that endure temptation. You can't just get tempted and fall out the truth right then and there. Continue. For when he is tried, uh -huh. he shall receive the crown of life. That's the crown that the most high is gonna give us, the crown of life. 
That's the crown of everlasting life, the crown of righteousness, the crown of glory, the crown of loving and everything. Continue what? Which the Most High hath promised. He's promised to who? To them that love him. And we know in order to show love, the, the love of God is to keep his commandments. He, he, promised this, he promised this crown to those that love him. So just like I read to y'all in 1 Corinthians, that those that's just trying to do the mastery and just want to have, want to play a part to make it look like you keep the commandments, to just, you know, man, like to just look like you keep the commandments like a Pharisee. But you're not, if you're not keeping no commandments, you don't love God. Right here, it just say to he promised those the crown of life to them that love him. So in order to get this crown of life, you gotta keep the commandments. That's the that's showing your love to the most high. You understand? Okay. Go ahead, All right, just a little motivation for you to not give up. Just think about what Christ went through for you. And let's let's get that in Hebrews 12, verse 1. We're gonna read down to 3. Let me know y'all get there. Say so be it. Be it. Hebrews 12, verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, and the sin which do it so easily beset us. And let us run with patience. Let us what? Let us run with patience. <clears throat> the race that is set before us. So he says, start right there. So he said, let us run with patience. So this is not a sprint. You can't expect everything to happen right away. We got to have patience on this walk, on this run. Just like in uh, Revelations 13 and 9, where he said, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Here is the patience of the saints. So I know our, I know our brothers will get fed up to see how our people is getting treated out here by the enemies. Talk about getting beat up by the cops, getting shot down. We just, we, we, we get impatient, but we just got to have patience and their time will come. Continue. Looking unto our author, Yeshaya, the, looking unto Yeshaya, the author and the finisher of our faith, who, the, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of the Most High. For consider him that endured such a contradiction of sinners against himself. Let us be weary of faith in your minds. He said, when you're having that thought of giving up, just think about what Christ went through for you. He was the ultimate sacrifice for our sins. That's just like if you have a close, a close sibling, like a brother, who dies so you can pursue your dream. No matter if it's becoming a football player, a boxer, or a doctor. If you know your brother died so you can pursue your dream, you know you're going to try everything in your power to reach that goal. And that's basically what Christ is. Christ is our brother, and he died so we can pursue the dream of making it to the kingdom. All praises. I'll bring it out. I just want to add this. Let us not disappoint Christ or disappoint the Most High. The Most High sent his firstborn, sent his son to die for our sins so we can make it into the kingdom. Let's not disappoint him and, and let, let what Yeshua did in vain. Let's go hard for this. God. And also, like, when we had our land, when the Most High had our land, when the Most High gave us our land back, when we was ruling, he was so patient with us. We went through so many kings who did evil in the sight of the Most High. We had some good kings too, but he stayed patient to see how we was going to do. So let's get that in 1 Kings 11, verse 11. Eleven and eleven. Eleven and eleven. Say so be it when you get there. Wherefore the most high said unto Solomon, For as much as is, as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes. I have commanded thee, I will surely bring the, bring the kingdom from thee and will give to thy servant. Start right there. So he's telling Solomon, since you disobey my covenant and my commandments, he's going to rip the kingdom from his direct bloodline. He's yeah. going to give it to the servant. He didn't destroy the kingdom right then and there. He just kept his patience because Solomon led us into, led us into sin. But continue. Notwithstanding in thy days, I will not do it for thy for David, thy servant, for David, thy father, saying, but I will rend it out of, thy, out of the hand of thy son. All right there. So he says he's going to rend it out of the hand of thy son. So, I mean, his son, like, 
Now that Solomon's sons was going to be able to be king because of what Solomon did, but we still had chances for other people that was part of Israel to be king. Continue. How be it, I will, I will not rend away all the kingdom, but will give one tribe to thy son for David my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen. So the Most High kept his patience. I mean, he was, he was fair. He gave Solomon's son just one tribe, but he continued, he, he wanted to see what was going to happen. Like, so he let other people to be, be kings and everything. I got a precept on that. Let's go to 2 Kings 8 and 19. He promised him to give all the way a life unto his children. So there it is again. He said he was not going to destroy Judah for David and servant's sake. Because David was pleasing in the Most High's eyes, so he kept his patient with the rest of Israel to see how he was going to do. But we just kept messing up, so the Most High was fed up, and he sent us into the captivity of the Babylonians. He still didn't give up on us, he just was fed up, so he just took our kingdom away. And we're still in captivity till this day, so he's waiting for us to get it right. Exactly. So the most high is waiting for us to get it right. You do not want us to, to worry about to worry about all the world needs while we get it right. He wants us to seek. Matter of fact, let me get that real fast while I say this at the same time. Matthew 6, 33. So he wants us to seek his face first while while we get it right. He don't want us to, to worry about all the worldly stuff, worry about the, the, the materialistic things while we trying to seek his face also, because then we're putting things before the most high while trying to do right. Matthew 33, you got it? Matthew 6, 33. Matthew 6, verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of the Most High. Seek what first? Seek ye first the kingdom of the Most High. Uh -huh. Go ahead. And his righteousness. And his righteousness. Go ahead. Right. And all these things shall be added unto you. So seek the Most High's kingdom first before anything, before your mama, your daddy, your wife, your kids. Seek the Most High first. And everything that you want, need, and, and desire of is going to be handed to you. You understand me? So that, so that, so I was getting there. I had to bring that out so I could bring out Matthew 19 and 23. You, know, you feel me? Because a lot of us be worried about the worldly stuff before we're worried about what I wants us right. to worry about. And he wants us to That's keep right. it, to keep his mammoths first, and then everything that we want and desire, he's gonna bring that, and he'll be he'll be added to it. Bring it out. And now, now that word that I didn't just focus on when it said it'll be added to you. Everything that everything that you got, he's going to add to that. The Most High God says, all we got to do is just do what He wants us to do. That's right. All right, Matthew twenty-four and thirteen. Matthew nineteen and twenty-three. Nineteen twenty-three. Nineteen twenty-three. We are there. Then said Yeshua unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. It's going to be a slight chance for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. You got, it could be Donald Trump, anyone that got billions of dollars. It's going to be a slight chance for you to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Continue. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. Now we know that that's a very thin door. Go ahead. Then for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of the Most High. It's easier for a camel to go through this thin door with all this weight on him, all this gold, anything, anything that, that we used to carry on the camel. It's easier for that camel to go through the eye of the needle than a man to the, the rich man in the kingdom of heaven. Continue. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed. His disciples heard that. It was like, man, like, man, that's crazy. Explain that to me, Josiah. Explain that to me what you're saying. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Saying, who then can be saved? Who can be saved? Continue on. But Yeshua beheld them and said unto them, 
with men, this is impossible. With men, this is impossible. We would look at that like, dang, like, that man, it's impossible to get into the kingdom of the Most High. We got to keep all these commandments. That's impossible. But just like a lot, a lot, a lot of Christians say, we could do anything through Christ who strengthens us. So if, if we could do anything like that, then, then the Most High can strengthen us to keep to, to keep His commandments and to get into the kingdom. He's going to say that with this next one. Go ahead. But the Most High, all things are possible. But through the Most High, anything you set your mind through, everything is possible. He will He will bless you with that. He will bless you with the strength to gain wisdom and knowledge, to keep His commandments, and to seek His face. Anything that you desire, He's going to bless you with that. So with the Most High, everything is possible. Don't think that can't do it. Don't let nobody say it's impossible to keep every all commandments because through the most high, it, anything is possible. That's right. Uh, like, my, like, like the disciples said, I, when they questioned them, who can be saved? Let's get that. Let's get that precept, Matthew 24 and 13. So let's go to Matthew 24 and 13. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. But he shall endure. But he that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. So he said, if you endure to the end, that's the one that's going to be saved. So if you give up on the most high, you're not making it to the end. You're not going to be saved. So we got to stay strong on this walk all the way to the end. That's the only way we're going to be saved. We got to stay keeping his commandments, stay going hard for the most high. And, uh, saying at the end of this uh, at the end of this run i have fought a good fight i have finished my course you don't want to be the ones that gave up on the most high you know what i'm saying read on oh, His right. court, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the most high the righteous judge shall give me and shall give me at that day and not only to me but unto them also that love is appearing so this is what it all comes down to there's there's multiple winners. There's not the second place or third place. We can all be winners. There's only a winner and a loser. If you give up on the most high, you're a loser. But if you don't give up on the most high, have patience, you're going to receive that trophy, which is the crown of life. So that's the whole moral of this lesson is to not give up on the most high, have patience, and just continue going hard for the most high. To, and to constantly endure. That's exactly what I was going to say. To constantly endure and to not be weary. Do not get tired on this run. Do not get tired on this narrow path to righteousness. And now, you got a question. Go ahead. Oh, I would say, you know, right before I track, I'm sure a lot of us, uh, even if you're on track, just run. We do get tired. Right. Right. Like right. you said, don't get tired. But no, we're going to get tired. The fact of the matter is, even if you have to crawl across that finish line to endure, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. 
And while we're being patient, it's because we're going to be buffeted on this wall. Right. 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 We're going to get beat up in this world. In the world of the Goyim, right. which is the world of the Gentiles. Exactly. We're going to get up on our faith and we're waiting for our Messiah to come back. Right. You know what I mean? We know that's an expected end. That's an expected end. You know what I mean? Exactly. Exactly. To receive that reward, you know, in that end. Just like my heart said, it don't matter what place you come in as long as you finish it. Right. Now, let's, now I'm, glad, I'm glad you said that, but now let's just get the, the whole conclusion of it. Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. That's right. Yes, it's right. 13. Yep. Yes, yeah. to go. Say so when you guys get there. Okay. Okay, Doc. Yes, this 12 and 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Let's hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Let's see why we here. Just give us just give us the word. Let's see why we here. What what are we here for? Go ahead. Fear the most high. Do what? Fear the most high. Say it again. Fear the most high uh -huh. and keep his commandments. Keep his commandments. Go ahead. For this is the whole duty of man. For this is the man. whole duty of man. That's why we're here. Bring That's it out, baby. Now we can find hey. it again in um, Revelation 22 and 14. Right. Revelation 22 and 14. Oh, praise. Say so good when you guys get there. It's the most important part right there. Yeah. You might as well throw 15 in there because 15 are the ones who didn't endure. Yeah. I'm going to get that one out too. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Go ahead, Art. Right. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Blessed are who? They that do his commandments. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That they may have the right to the tree of life. Y'all want to be a part of that tree of life, keep these commandments, and you will be blessed. Go ahead. And may enter in through the gates into the city. Y'all want to get into that kingdom, New Jerusalem, the spot where you have a mansion, where the Most High set up a mansion for each one of his servants. Keep these commandments, endure to the end, do not give up. Continue on. Now let's see. Now let's see the judgment for those that do not keep his commandments. Go ahead. For without our dogs. For without our what? Dogs. The Most High is calling you guys dogs. For those that do not want to keep his commandments, go ahead. And sorcerers, sorcerers, and whoremongers, go ahead. And murderers, go ahead. And idolaters, uh -huh. and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. That part right there. Now, with that being said, you feel me like this was man my first lesson to do. I'm, I'm glad you guys bear with me. You feel me? So, all praise to the Most High. The High of God should be sorry about the Most I just, want, I just want to leave y'all with one scripture also. This is for the marriages, people who having little issues in their marriages about spouses who don't believe. Let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians 7 and 12. First Corinthians 7 and 12. But to but to the to the rest speak I. Oh, hold on, hold on. Oh, go ahead. Hold on, you don't play. Oh, God. Seven and twelve. <laughs> huh. But to the rest speak I, not the most high. If any brother have a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him. Let him not put her away. Stop right there. So he said, if any brother have a wife that, that that do not believe, do not put her away if she find it okay to live with you. So if you keeping the commandments, you're going to the Sabbath every day, you're not celebrating holidays in your house, you're not cooking pork, if she find that okay, you know, have patience with her. Do not just uh, dump her, you feel me? Do not divorce her. Continue. And the woman which has a husband that believeth not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. So vice versa, if a woman have a husband, she's not supposed to leave him either if, if he don't believe. That's just because we all at one point, we didn't believe the way we believe now. And the Most High still was patient with us. 
that's why we all here today and it's true. Like I have a testimony where when I was in the world, I was caught slipping in a bad neighborhood where two, two dudes were shooting at me and over 10 bullets hit my car, they were shooting at me and only one grazed my ankle. So the most high was patience with me. He didn't give up on me because he knew I was gonna come into this truth and this is where I'm at now. So I all praise it to the most high. So we're not supposed to give up on our spouses if they don't believe. So what about being un unequally with unequally yoked? Say, say it one more time. Unequally yoked. Unequally yoked. Unequally yoked. That is unequally yoked. That is unequally yoked. Because one's believing and one's not really believing. So the scripture is just saying that's okay. Don't don't put her or him away. Have right. patience. You just exactly. continue to walk the walk. And that, un that unyoked person, eventually watching you keep the walk. Lead by example. Lead by example should come around. The most high is going to bring that person around. Don't believe, but he find it uh, pleasing to dwell with you. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Don't put him away. And vice versa. Because let, let's jump down to 15. They said, but if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage. So we can't make them stay. If they want to leave, they can leave. But if they find it okay to uh, be with you because you're going hard for the most high, then you just keep. Shall 
marry another committed adultery. And whoso is marrying her, which is put away, do it commit adultery. So this is the thing here. What he's saying is, what he was saying, uh, what uh, the real was saying is true. The whole process is exposing your mate. But before you sleep with that woman, if you sleep with her, she don't go in fornication, you're done. You gotta work out whatever you want. Don't matter. Well, look at that. Work that out. But like it says right here, uh, it said accept the for fornication, right? And shall marry another committed adultery. But we have to understand, everything in the physical has a spiritual counterpart. So, so when your, your mate commit fornication, it's also getting into idolatry of things in the world. It don't have to mean physical, her laying down with somebody physical. Uh, it, it, it don't have to mean that you know with the adultery, you know what I'm saying? Because Israel committed adultery by it's having idols. Exactly. So everything physical, uh, physical has a spiritual connotation to it as well. So we understand both sides, the physical and the spiritual aspect of it. Exactly. Yeah, we are wow. married to God. So if we start serving other gods, we have committed adultery to God. So they just said. Yeah. Well, I'm just asking. Hey, uh, hey, what? What 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 this Tyrod's picture? Hey, 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 one thing I wanted to bring out to everybody on the John 4 22. John 4 22. John 4 22. John 4 22. Matter of fact, we're going to start at, uh, we're going to start at, we're going to start at 20. Start at 20. Matter of fact, matter of fact, matter of fact, we're going to start at, man, we're going to start at, uh, Start at seven. Oh, you got a question? Yeah, I, I just want that more of the communication about the scripture inside that. Um, I don't remember it specifically, but it says that you do can put away, you know. I think that it got to do with the devil's there for the Yes, yes, yes. It doesn't necessarily mean that you physically committing adultery because we committed adultery against the most high but that doesn't mean that we want to have you know sex with another person adultery means more than it's more spiritual than other things so so rock 25 and 26 my part are you trying to not as thou wouldest have her go cut her off from thy flesh and give her a bill of divorce and let her go that's it so that that's exactly that fornication Exactly. Okay, okay, so if, 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 a, if a woman is, 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 a, is a Muslim, she's committing adultery. It's adultery. Which is adultery. Which is adultery. Exactly. Idolatry, and then you can send her away. Yeah. Like that uh, goes. Even, even in modern day times, if your wife is plugged in and hooked up with somebody else, that's adultery. Yeah. 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 Dressing in modest and she idolized the clothes and you know, all of certain people and issues, that's idolatry and adultery. You right, can let her right. go based on that. But if it's well for you to dwell with her, exactly. you know what I'm saying? You can keep her. Right? Because you can sanctify her hopefully eventually or vice versa. Right. And then, you know what I'm saying? Right. So that that's how it is when we look at all the scriptures put together, you can come understanding that. That's, that's, that's a precept of Matthew. That's a precept of what the scripture that you use. Is right. for, because fornication is not only having sex, it's fornication, a spiritual fornication. Now let's say tomorrow I go and I be like, I don't want to work in this truth no more. I want to go back to be a Christian. He actually can put me away. Yes, he can because I'm committing fornication against the Most High, against himself. Let me interject something. I would, I, this is me talking, this ain't him. I already gave my scripture. I'm going to go to him. How can you hear
time, Christ cleared it up. Because this is speaking on giving her a bill of divorce. Ecclesiastes 25 and, 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 uh, and 26. 26. Yeah. And also putting your wife away. Christ cleared it up on both of those issues. Putting her away and the bill of divorce. He said because of the hardness of your heart, Moses allowed you to divorce your wife. But from the beginning, it was not like that. Because if anything, ultimately, Eve committed the first spiritual fornication, adultery, and all that. Could Adam leave her? No. It wasn't like that from the beginning. You stuck. Figure it out. It's it hard. Because you know, well, I don't know if y'all agree. Because you know what would happen to that spouse? They would get stoned to death. That's why. Well, they would get stoned to death, right? Right, right. right. Yeah, so you can not divorce them. We have to put precept with precept. That's, you, 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 hey, boy, what about the man who got caught up in the state of adultery? Stoning wasn't an effect when he was The woman who got caught up in adultery. They was like no. the stoner, right? Uh, listen, yeah, listen. You want to know why they didn't, though? You want to know why they didn't? I know why they didn't, but go why? ahead. Why? Because, because Christ was bringing grace to the whole situation. Uh, not only that, not only that. If you caught in the midst of the adultery, a uh, person uh, can't commit adultery by themselves. That was the man. That's us too. Yeah, that's what I was trying to yeah. say. He was bringing grace, yeah. and that's why he's what he said to the Pharisees and Sadducees. That's what he said. What he said, and he went out and said, "Cast your first stone," and then walked out. And that's the whole point. When Christ comes to see, he's bringing grace now, and not sacrifice. When it goes back to the law of sin and death, the law of stoning. Exactly. And that's actually what Christ does away with with the law of stoning, which is attached to the law of sin and death. I.e., you have to make a sacrifice for the sin. If you don't get caught. You gotta do a blood sacrifice, right? Exactly. But if you get caught, what is that? In the Old Testament, they put you to death. Yeah, exactly. So that wife can be put to death exactly. in the Old Testament. Exactly. And the New Testament is mercy and grace. Right, right, right. But we still have the option under the mercy exactly. and grace. Yeah. Well, would y'all no, agree on this? Yeah, I agree on that. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Or, <laughs> No, but brother, it's like right there. Yeah, you're right too, though. I'm not, you're right. No, 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 you're right too. I'm not going to argue with everybody. No, 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 no. This is not a dialogue. 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 This is edification. We are not Christians. No we are Hebrew Israelites. This is for edification purposes. So the moral, the moral of the lesson is just having patience with your spouse. Just having patience. Exactly. I think this guy is all Some of us are made like you two are experts. So back and forth. Saying all this to everybody listening who haven't done that kind of studying. It's like, whoa, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's why I need to be trained. I, I agree with the brother, but it's certain steps we have to get to. And, and, and that's the point. Yeah, of, I, that's, I, the I, point I, that's the point of this I, lesson right. about endurance. Right. Because we all want results, but we don't want the process. Right. It's, we got to it's have a it. process to be blessed. That's right. right. That's right. right. It's like a seed. It's like that has to be cultivated and watered and flowed. I want to eat that right now. See, he's don't grow with that. Right. right. See, he's don't grow with that. I don't want to wait for it to grow. Right. I want to marry her right now. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I can give up. I can say, baby, I can't force her to wrap her hair. I can't force her to come in this Sabbath. She her own woman. But if I'll be my best example, and I'm not perfect at all, she would be in the truth a lot faster, but... At her rate, I'm 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 in, I'm impressed. I'm using us as an example. I can't force her. She's an independent, smart woman. But what I can do is, here's the goal in the process. Can we be unconditional? The whole reason we gotta go through the process. He reminded us to become not just forgiving. Hey y'all, don't finish up. Finish up. You know what it is to be unconditional. <laughs> All praise to the Most High. We're going to to next Saturday, to next Sabbath. You know, we uh. But when you say that uh, the under the 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 the